first of all, I'd just like to remind everyone who the SBRC is. We've already heard from Etihad Airways, we've heard from the Boeing Company, we, but we have other members as well. Uh, one of them is a company called United Oil Products, UOP, it's a Honeywell company. Uh, we have also uh, a French European conglomerate uh, whose uh, name is Safran, most of you know uh, this company. And we also have uh, GE as our newest member in the SBRC. As uh, Barbara pointed out, uh, two very key uh, statistics are, are very important for our work. One of them is that 97% of the world's water is in the oceans. So this is a fact that we can just simply not ignore. Uh, most of the bioenergy projects around the world focus on growing biomass in the, what I would call the traditional way we know how to grow biomass, and that is with arable land and fresh water. So the groundbreaking research we're doing is allowing us to grow biomass using seawater in arid land. So that key combination is what makes this so interesting. And so just to remind you what the integrated seawater energy and agriculture system looks like, we have water that's pumped in from the ocean. We use this water to irrigate an aquaculture farm where we grow fish and shrimp. And then when these animals are growing, they produce a lot of waste. That waste goes into the water. And so the water that is in those ponds needs to be recycled or needs to be put out. And so what most aquaculture industry companies do around the world is that this water they just return back to the ocean with no specific treatment. <coughs> so this is a very big environmental problem. So what we do, is that we actually take this water coming out of the aquaculture farm, which is full of waste, but in this case, that waste is a nutrient. And so we use that waste as a fertilizer to irrigate a plantation of halophyte plants. The specific plant we're looking at right now is a plant called Salicornia vingolobii, but we are evaluating a number of halophyte plants that are actually indigenous to the UAE and to the region because that will enable us to do this in a more sustainable manner. The water that remains from the halophyte field is then derived into these bands of mangrove forests. These mangroves are put in place, and they're cultivated mangroves. They're not the mangroves that are actually out there right now. We cultivate these mangroves so that they act as a final filtering frontier, removing any nutrients that are left in the water, and acting as a very efficient carbon sink because mangroves have a very extensive root structure and so they're able to store carbon in a very effective way. So the water that remains from this system that is eventually going back to the ocean is actually in the best case scenario uh, in the same condition that the water that came in. And so thereby we're creating a filter for the aquaculture industry. Uh, I might uh, take this opportunity to remind everyone that aquaculture is growing at around a 6% per year. Uh, and that number is bound to increase because of the protein needs in the human population. Uh, the fish stocks in, in the open ocean are, are actually at a very stable level and there's, we can't really over, keep overfishing. And so aquaculture is bound to grow and so environmental problems associated with aquaculture are bound to grow. So we need a system such as this to act as an eco, uh, like an ecological service for this type of an industry. I'll tell you a little bit about the project location. As, uh, as has been mentioned, this project is located in Mazar City. You all know where Mazar City is and what Mazar City represents. Uh, we're very proud to be able to build this pilot facility within Mazar City. So. Uh, within the context of Abu Dhabi, uh, you know where, where the airport is, Mazar City is just across the road from the airport. Within the context of Mazar City, we have a plot of 20,000 square meters. It's a two hectare plot that is about 200 meters by 100 meters, where we are actually, uh, it's not a perfectly square plot, but just to give you an idea of the, of the, of the shape of the plot, and where it's located within the context of Mazar City. Um, as I said, we have just a little over 20,000 square meters. 
And so within the confines of that plot, we've created this microcosm of the integrated seawater energy and agriculture system. And as you're able to see in this, in this, uh, in this plot, we have six aquaculture ponds. And so each of these aquaculture ponds is designed to hold either a different species or a different intensity level or a different salinity level or a different temperature. As I said, what the whole purpose behind the pilot is for us to be able to test these variables and push these variables to the limit so that when we go out to a larger scale, we are able to answer the questions in a much better way and address the challenges that might present themselves in a much better way. So you can also see that we have about eight uh, salicornia fields. And so these rectangular uh, fields that you see in the middle are salicornia fields that are going to be planted with this halophyte plant. Um, it's a, it has uh, within the entire, uh, I guess, plot, we have a, a very sophisticated drainage system because we want to be monitoring the quality of the water as it moves through the system. We want to be monitoring the pH, the salt, and we want to understand how those move through the system. The final uh, step in the system is the, the mangrove silviculture. And so we have four mangrove, and we call them swamps, because they're mangroves grow in this intertidal zone where they receive uh, what I would call full water for a period, of, a period of the day, and then they receive no water for another period of the day. So, what we're trying to do here is mimic that system. And we have a, sort of a levee system where the water moves from one of the ponds into, or one of the swamps into the other one, and thereby creating this effect of the rising and, 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 and lowering of the tide. We also have a trench at the end of the system so that we can recuperate the water that comes out. And then that water we use to recycle back to the top of the facility where we have tanks where, they, where we can test the quality of the water before it is pumped back into the reservoir that is before the aquaculture ponds. And so as you can see, the system is designed to recycle as much of the water as we can, monitor all of the variables that are of interest to us so that we are able to better confront the challenges that growing something on a system like this would, would entail, we're also having, I don't have a, a specific picture of a cross section, but in the cross sections you would be able to see the depth of the ponds and you would be able to see the soil layer on each of these different fields. And so one of the other variables that we're going to be studying is actually the composition of the soil and the type of soil that is most efficient at dealing with this type of system and the strategies that we can use to improve the quality, the quality of the soil for when we move out to a larger scale and we're not able to design the soil in, in the way we want. This is just a, another close-up of the system. This is the, as you can see, this is the, what I would call the southwest corner, and, and referring to the other, other plot. And you can see right there we have a, a tank, a couple of tanks, and in, next to those tanks we have a solar array because we're going to be using solar energy to power the pumps within the plot. So this is an, a project that is taking into consideration the philosophy behind NASTAR and the philosophy behind the research that is being carried out at NASTAR Institute. And so we are using other renewable technologies to power the pumps that we're going to be using in the system to pump the water back up and to move the water from one place to the other. And just as a, you know, these are a couple of renders from an earlier version of this of this pilot facility, but it's just to give you a, a very general idea of how it would look like. It would look like. And uh, as a final consideration, uh, this is the plot of land as it looks today. So the first step uh, that we're going to take is actually to replant all of those trees. If you were to go out there, you would think that those trees pretty much look uh, dead because they're very dry. But one of the utmost, uh, I guess, indications that we've received from Master City is that each and every tree that is in that plot needs to be relocated to some other area within the city. 
And so that's the first task that we're going to be undertaking. And once the, the terrain is clean, we'll start with the earth movement and all the other activities so that we can get the pilot facility built. Um, then, just a, as a reminder, this is a project that is addressing many of the points that are actually of concern to many of the people that talk about biofuels, that talk about bioenergy in general. This is about food security in a country such as this. The strategy that the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi has laid out for the development of aquaculture within the Emirate is, is very aggressive and very forward-looking. And so we believe that we can work together to create a sustainable system for the Emirate and for the future of Abu Dhabi. Uh, it obviously addresses water use. We're not using fresh water. So this is a very key point. And as you can very well tell, it generates a lot of industry synergy. Uh, industries that are key components to the economy of Abu Dhabi, the aviation industry, are integrated together with, for example, the refining industry. Because in one of the other efforts that we launched, uh, the Biojet Abu Dhabi effort, this stakeholder engagement process, we're engaging with the entire value chain for generating these fuels. So, for example, Takrir is also, uh, we're also working with Takrir to finalize the refining of these, of these fuels and get them to be a, a jet. It is also about knowledge creation. This type of research, I can tell you, is not being done in, in any of the major university centers around the world. There are no serious uh, efforts to conduct uh, research on halophytes for bioenergy. So this is, this is uh, one of the fields that we here at Maslar Institute are specializing in and, and we have actually a first mover, if you will, one of the first movers in this field. So this is, this is very important. And of course, uh, being that this is the year of innovation, uh, we believe that this is an engine for innovation. Uh, we believe that this type of project can be exported to other regions around the world and it can be a very you know, beneficial project for the aviation industry but for many other industries that are going to be critical um, in the next 50 to 100 years. Um, this is a very exciting day for Maslark Institute and for the SDRC. As my colleagues have pointed out, uh, the development of sustainable biofuels is an essential element for reducing carbon risk and transforming the aviation industry. But uh, the research that we're conducting at Mass Dark Institute actually has implications in a much further reach than just the aviation industry. As Barbara has pointed out, Producing bioenergy in the desert, where both fresh water and arable land are in short supply, while also harmoniously producing food, is truly game changing. I am proud of the technological innovations occurring at Mass Art Institute, and we are proud of our partnership with Boeing, Etihad Airways, and the other SBRC members. Moving from the laboratory to the field is always an achievement. And I am pleased to announce the awarding of a contract to international mechanical and electrical company, Amico, uh, to build this pilot project within land in Mazdar City. The pilot project is expected to be operational in the late, in late summer of this year. The goal of this pilot project is to demonstrate the integrated bioenergy process as a commercially viable and sustainable system that addresses essential food and fuel production, reduced carbon emissions, and waste water cleanup. As the UAE enters the year of innovation, this project brings our nation, the UAE, to the forefront of a global movement to create sustainable alternative fuels whose production supports and not competes with food, food and fresh water resources uh, that we need to conserve. 